Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning, uh, and a thank you to our bell choir for that beautiful song. That was lovely. Um, Before we begin, we have a ton of announcements, like quite, quite a few. I encourage you to take a look at your grab-and-go. There's a lot you can learn in here, uh, and you can always check out our church website or our Facebook page for info about upcoming events. I just want to lift up some of them. Today, we, uh, the children's ministry team is putting on a mystery dinner after our second service, Um, and including mysteries, we have a mystery event next week on Sunday for 7th to 12th graders. There will be some hints coming this Wednesday for what we'll be doing. Um, But there's information out on the youth board for that, and there's a sign-up sheet out there too. Uh, Next Sunday, we have Camp Sunday, uh, and I think you, most of you have noticed that we have a beautiful envelope fundraiser out in the social hall. Um, We have to raise $320 per kid. Uh, The families pay half and the church pays half. So we are working to raise money to send kids to camp. Um, It is a wonderful gift that we are able to give to Uh, families to help them send their kids to learn about God, to learn about nature, to grow in faith, to be with friends, uh, and to make those lifelong memories. So I encourage you to take one of those. Yes. Do the math. 45 times 320. I'm going to need a calculator and an abacus. Okay? But yes, that... uh, That is significant, but it is a very doable thing for us to make sure we can send these kids off to camp. Uh, We have uh, Easter's coming up, so our Easter lily forms, I believe, are in our uh, bulletins. We also have extras on the back back table. We have an Applebee's event coming up for 8th graders on March 31st. We have new members being welcomed during our services today, and we also have a new member event in between services uh, in the upper room because it was postponed, because we live in Minnesota, and yay. But we are glad that we get to gather with our new members this morning. Um, Next week we have our noisy offering uh, going to Lutheran Disaster Relief, and Uh, That is the 25th anniversary of that uh, Comfrey St. Peter tornado. So we understand how important this is. Uh, They are often the first people who get there after a disaster and very often the last people who leave. Uh, So make sure you bring uh, some noisy offering for Lutheran disaster relief. We also have our uh, Holy Week schedule in your grab-and-go. Make sure you Take a look at that. We've got Palm Sunday worship, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday at Christ the King, and Easter Sunday worship. Uh, So make sure that's all on your calendar. The last announcement I have is we have these beautiful flowers up here uh, in memory of Paul Wilker. A wonderful memory for a wonderful man. With all that said, I invite you to stand as you're able and will join in our gathering hymn.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We'll take a moment for reflection. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son so that all who may receive life. The promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you with the Spirit's power. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for today is Psalm 23. We will read the psalm together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me before still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along great pathways for your namesake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second lesson for today is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 to 14. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention that such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake. 
rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Word of God, word of life. Stand for the gospel acclamation. actually should have had you remain seated. It's a really long gospel, so please be seated. The Holy Gospel according to John chapter 9. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus walked along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he, but others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it in my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been formerly blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, How do you what do you say about it? It was your eyes he opened, and he said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight, and asked them, Is this this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. So if this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and you are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. 
He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Kids, come on up for a message. Come on up. There's more here. Come on up. So glad you're here. Come on, gather around. There's room for everyone up here. Have a seat. So I would like everybody to close your eyes. Close your eyes real tight. Everybody have them closed? How many fingers am I holding up? What? <laughs> Somebody open their eyes. <laughs> you can Now everyone open your eyes and she was right. There are two fingers being held up. We have to be looking to see what's going on, don't we? So today Jesus is teaching us though that there's other things to pay attention to. Not just what's right in front of us. But Jesus teaches us to pay attention to the people around us. Jesus teaches us to pay attention to how he is at work in the world. So if you close your eyes again, close your eyes real tight. If you can't see anything, now open them. And now I want you to tell me things that you're thankful for. Things that God has given you that you know and you're paying attention to that God has given you. So what are you thankful for? Your mommy and your daddy, and God gave you a mom and dad who love you, didn't he? And so that's something to be thankful for. And now you've noticed it. You've paid attention. What else are you thankful for? Just thankful for life, yeah, and everything God has given you. So you you know that that's a gift from God. You're paying attention. How about anyone else? Oh, you are so thankful that God sent Jesus because you know, you've paid attention that Jesus is our Savior, isn't he? And Jesus forgives us, and Jesus died for us. So you're paying attention to God's gifts. Anything else? Oh, our hearts. God gave us hearts. And you know, our hearts do more than one thing, right? Our hearts pump the blood all over our body so we live, but then our hearts like help us to love people, right? Help us to love and care for people. So today Jesus reminds us And our hearts definitely keep us alive. Jesus teaches us to pay attention. Pay attention to all the things God has given us and all the things God does in our life. So let's have a prayer. And you can repeat after me. Dear Lord, thank you for everything that you have given us. Help us to pay attention And remember these gifts each day. Amen. Thanks for coming up. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So these last couple of weeks, memories of the beginning of the pandemic um, and things shutting down and, you know, doors being locked keep popping up on social media and also in the news because it's been three years now since the pandemic hit. And then someone else reminded Pastor Dave and I that it was 25 years ago on March 26th of the Comfrey Hanska and St. Peter tornadoes that devastated so many homes and businesses and farms and churches. Now, when you remember these things, like when I remember the pandemic, I can be taken right back to those early days. And it can be kind of difficult, can't it, to remember that? Because so much was lost. But I think remembering might also remind us 
of the things we learned during those difficult and tragic events. And that's what I'm thinking about today as we talk about being called to be attentive. It seems like something like a pandemic or a tornado causes us to pay better attention, to notice what's really important to us, what we value most. We grieve what we have lost at those times, and at the same time, we pay attention to what we still have. And when we see how quickly everything can change, we tell ourselves, okay, from now on, I know I need to be more attentive and grateful for what I value the most. And I think at those times in a crisis, we become more attentive to how God is with us and how God is working even in the most difficult situations. So today we've heard the story of the blind man healed. It's interesting to me that when this man was no longer blind, the neighbors didn't even know who he was. They didn't recognize him when he wasn't sitting and, you know, blind and unable to see and begging. Here these people had walked by him day after day, but they really never knew who he was. They hadn't been paying attention. They never truly saw him. They had seen only a blind beggar, so much so that when he was no longer blind and no longer begging, they didn't even recognize him. I mean, he doesn't even have a name in this story. I wonder how often we go through our days like this, you know? We walk by what is important. We walk right by what's right in front of us. We don't pay attention to people in need. We don't always take the time to cherish our family and friends. We don't take the time we know we would like to take for God. You know, all of those things that actually we had learned were important during the pandemic. It makes you think, doesn't it, that we're all blind? Just in a little different way than the man Jesus healed. The man who was blind and begging. But you know, that man was much more than that, wasn't he? We do that too, though. We limit people. We see people. We label people. We put them in a box. And when we do that, we lose out on all they have to offer this world. And we lose out because by not knowing them, we have diminished our lives and the blessing that they could be to us. I think we show our own blindness when we do that, when we label people, when we walk by people. We show our blindness when we're uncomfortable with those who are different than us, and so we choose to ignore them. Or we try to fix people who are unlike us, to try and make them more like us, rather than to understand who they are and understand their world. We learn from this story and things like the pandemic how often we are blind to what is truly around us, all of the gifts that we have that we so often take for granted, and we lose out, we take for granted so many people on a daily basis. And we instead place our attention on things that really don't matter that much to us in the long run. And so we lose our way, and we lose out on the joy and the gratitude of all of the gifts that God has given us. This is a kind of blindness that I think this gospel reveals to us. The kind of blindness that causes us to walk by and the kind of blindness that causes us to not be attentive to our gifts and to God and God's people. But there's another kind of blindness revealed in this gospel too, and that is the blindness to the kind of new life that is offered to us in Jesus. In this story, the cost of acknowledging Jesus was sent by God was too much for the Pharisees. They found excuses for why it couldn't be God who had done this healing. First, because Jesus hadn't observed the Sabbath so in their way, so it couldn't be God. Second, because they assumed they were the dispensers of God's grace and were the disciples of Moses, so this couldn't possibly have happened as claimed. And third, there is just no way the Pharisees thought that God would work through this sinner to teach them 
the Pharisees. And they are so bothered by all of this that they drive this man out. It's as though they don't even want to see this man who stands as a witness to Jesus, to God's love for us, God's people. They were threatened in some way by his testimony. And so they send him away, and their ways put such fear in the parents that even his parents desert him. It's obvious to us that they're blind to Jesus as the Son of God. Because whenever Jesus shows up, everything changes in the gospel, doesn't it? Including the fact that a blind man can be healed. Are we paying attention to that? Do we see and acknowledge how Jesus changes our lives and transforms our stories of loss and desperation and meaninglessness into stories of hope and love and grace? As I said, when Jesus shows up, everything changes. And it is only the blind man in this story who acknowledges that. I mean, why would anyone want to be blind to that, to what Jesus has done? I think a big reason is fear. Fear of change could be a reason. They didn't want to upset the status quo. Even in an unhealthy situation or situations we know could be better, oftentimes we just stay with the status quo, don't we? Because it's just too overwhelming to change or maybe too scary to have to change, or we'd have to give up some of our power, or we would have to be more open to different ways of doing things, things that aren't easy. So fear can be a reason we don't want to acknowledge Jesus and how Jesus changes our lives. Or we're blind to how Jesus changes our lives because we don't think we deserve it. We don't really think we deserve the unconditional love of God, so we continue to live in shame and guilt, and that means we remain just stuck where we're at. Stuck in lives that are limited, stuck in lives that carry around all of these burdens and mistakes on our own, and then we are stuck in not being attentive to all of the good around us, all of the joy around us, and all of the variety of gifts that God has given us. We are slow to recognize Jesus and the work Jesus does among us and the work Jesus wants us to accomplish in and through us. We're not attentive either. We can be blind. We hold back. We let others define who we are with a label or we define ourselves in ways that limit God's love and grace. And then we do the same to others. We play it safe. And we let other people be the witnesses. And we sometimes even turn away those who may be bringing good news for us because we're scared of change. And we too, we're like those people in the story who walk right by people that God loves and cares for. Jesus healed the blind we know he did many other miracles and taught many other things in the Gospels. Jesus willingly gave his life away for the sake of the world. And now, those of us who are his disciples, those of us who follow him with our lives, are called and empowered to be attentive. To be attentive to God's work in the world and be attentive to what we value, the gifts God has given us, be attentive to those in need around us. Be attentive to the gifts all of God's people to have to offer. And be attentive to the work that God wants to do in and through us and through this congregation. Three years ago, the doors of this church had to be locked. And it's painful to even remember that time. And whether you agree with that mandate to lock the doors or not, that is what happened. Businesses were closed. Kids were all at home. Those who could were working from home. Essential workers kept working, kept putting their health at risk. And people learned from something from that, didn't they? Didn't we learn something from that? People were talking about they learned how important their family is. 
and how important family time together is, how important their faith is, how important this church is to them. They notice the many people that we take for granted on a daily basis. And those who have experienced a tornado, like my own family, we often learn those same things in that crisis. But we learn something. We learn to be attentive. Today, let's remember that, and let's hear this gospel and, re and let Jesus open our eyes again. Let's take all of that, all that we learned in that time, and let's live that right now. Let's let Jesus open our eyes. Let's be attentive to the things that we value most. Let's be attentive to how God is at work in our lives and in the lives of others. Let's be attentive to how God is calling us to do God's work in this world. Let's be attentive to our neighbors in need. And let's thank God. Let's thank God for loving us even though we're blind. Let's thank God for a shepherd who walks with us in the greenest pastures and the darkest valleys. Amen. Please stand as we sing our hymn of the day, Drawn to the Light. time we'd like to call up Chad and Heather. There are new members joining at this service. So with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. 
We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. So sisters and brothers, our new members today in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? And people of God, do you promise to support and pray for these new members and those who will be joining at the second service in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us welcome these sisters and brothers in Christ to this faith, uh, community of faith. We, we rejoice, rejoice with you in, in the life of baptism. baptism. Together, Together we, we will give thanks and praise to God and, and proclaim the good news to all the world. Let's give them a round of applause. Yes, welcome to welcome. our saviors. We're glad you're here. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. God, who watches over us, open our eyes, open our minds, and open our hearts. Help us to see you in the world around us. Call us to attentiveness so that we can share your mercy, change our perspective, and grow our faith in your hope, love, and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Creating God, by your word you have made all things, and you hate nothing you have made. Teach us to perceive the beauty of the breadth of your creation, from the grandest mountain range to the smallest springtime bud. Lord, in your mercy. God, our host, you fill us at your table with more than we could ever ask. Feed us with hunger for justice. Equip the feeding ministries of this congregation and community. Be with those who are in pain or in need. We pray especially for Audrey, Russ, Dixie, Brad, Sharon, Mike, Joyce, Ken, Lyndon, Mavis, Anne, Stella, Dave, Pam, Sharon, Marion, Ted, and all those that we lift up now, out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. We 
we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to turn to those around you and share a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, everybody. Let us pray together. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The meal is ready. Christ is the host. Come as you are. All are welcome. Please stand for the communion blessing and prayer. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Loving God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. 
and receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our sending hymn. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.